What's up? We're just starting. Just starting? Yeah. We're just starting. Ask away, it's FNF Q&A. Hey, welcome to FNF Q&A, the show where you submit your salon business questions. I'm Benjamin J, as always, here to help. Um, this week, we have our amazing class with Emily Costello coming up on Monday. We're 90% sold out, which is super awesome. This is our first time featuring her here at our academy in Chicago. Um, the salon is going really good. I, I don't know, March, I don't know about everybody, but March has been super busy for us. Uh, we have been seeing uh, this month nearly 140 new guests at our River North location, and we're seeing uh, about 40 new guests at our West Loop location, so things are going great for us in the salon. We could not be happier. Just goes to show when people say Q1 is supposed to be your slow time, that doesn't necessarily have to be true. So um, we're doing great stuff there. We started uh, a new Instagram account specifically for salon business stuff. So if you have been following along with us at, at FFSalonEDU, you can now follow all of our business posts at FFSalonBiz. So that's a new playground for you to hang out in. Uh, and with that, let's answer some questions. This stylist says, I rent a chair and I get so many people using credit cards and you get hit with fees for people using them. Is it wrong to offer a cash discount? Man, those credit card fees have got to be one of the most annoying things. Uh, and I totally know where you're at because uh, when we were setting up our new location here, we had to go through the whole new process of, of setting up with our credit card processor and going through numbers. And I've talked with, with other stylists and other owners that I think we all feel the same where it's like, we did the work, we want to collect the money, but you've got to give up that percentage in order to collect the money. Uh, at least when they use credit cards. And so um, I get exactly where you're coming from. Um, as somebody that does about a million dollars in credit card transactions, trust me, I know the pain. Uh, the thing is though, I mean, your credit card transactions, while they're annoying, they're only going to be two to three percent maybe 5% at the really high end if, if somehow you, you just don't have good rates. Um, I don't know that there's really gonna be much of an incentive for a cash discount because I think what, what ends up happening is you're going to over discount. If you start giving people a 10% discount to use cash, well now you're coming out even less than where you were before. So I would just continue to use credit cards if you, if you want to put a sign that says we prefer cash or cash tips or something like that, you can. Um, I don't think that it looks very classy, to be perfectly honest. Uh, I think that at this point in where we are at in service and people spending, credit cards are a must. And the uh, service fees are just a cost of doing business in today's world. The stylist wants to know, how do I keep up with the trends? Thanks for this question. This question was submitted to us via email. You can send them directly to me at classes at ffsaloneducation.com and then we'll put them on the show. So uh, to answer this, I think that the best way to keep up with the trends is to have those magazines that have a ton of pictures of haircuts in them and just keep them in the salon. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, honestly, the best way today is, the advantage is today it's a lot easier than it's ever been before. Um, stay focused on salon industry things like Hairbrained, uh, Modern Salon, American Salon. Follow them online because they're always posting cool stuff. Stay connected to more consumer facing pages and accounts, you know, um, Allure, Vogue, things like that because they're of course always going to be showing what's coming up and what's new. Um, participate on Pinterest because Pinterest is user uh, shared content and so if you start to see what's getting pinned a lot, that to me tells me that that's what real people are interested in. So you've got different channels. You can stick within the hair industry and see what those publications are doing. You can stay uh, consumer and see what those consumer brands are saying is coming up. And then you can actually pay attention to the people today and follow along with what they're sharing online. But online is the place to be to find what's up and coming and what's gonna be new. This owner asks, what benefits do you feel like you should provide for your stylist? So we're a commission-based salon, employee-based, team-based, and um, it's my belief that I have to provide whatever I need to in order to make uh, the other half 
of the commission that they may feel like they're giving up, that's a classic term, that stylists feel like they're giving up part of what they make, that they are getting more value than what they're giving up. All right, so if you're, if you're in a salon where you're 50-50, you have to be sure that what you are doing for your team makes up 51% so that they feel like they're getting more value than what they're paying for. Um, with that, we try and provide as much as we possibly can. We have an hourly guarantee forever, so no matter what happens, let's, if you become our top stylist and all of a sudden you have a week where nobody comes in, I don't know, it would be a really bad week, but if nobody came in and you still showed up to work, I'll still pay you because you're part of our team and I think you need to have um, income in order to have the lifestyle or a lifestyle and pay your bills. Um, next would be education. We provide so much education to our team. We have not including our protege program where we build people, for our team that has already fully certified to be a stylist, we provide over 80 hours of education a year for them to continue to grow. Um, financially, we offer two weeks paid vacations, uh, which I think is actually um, very rare within our, our industry. Uh, we offer retirement programs with a 401k that people can contribute to. Um, we also have insurance programs that people can be a part of because obviously lifestyle and health are a big part of you know, life and we need to have people have the confidence that they are, if anything were to happen, that they would be okay. Um, and I would, even, I would even include our marketing and our branding, to be honest, as a benefit. You know, uh, I put in a lot of time in order to have a brand and marketing program so, this, so that people can build their, their careers. We have uh, beautiful facilities. We provide all the tools, uh, not cutting tools necessarily, but all of your styling tools, brushes, hot tools, things like that. So we try and provide as much as possible to take any of the burden off of the stylist or any of the burden off of our team in terms of being able to grow and have the careers that they want to have. If, if we can eliminate that, they have more confidence and they will be able to grow. I've, I've long time have thought that it's not just my team working for me, but it's me working for my team. And that I think is an important aspect for owners to think about when it comes to what benefits are you gonna provide for them to be able to grow. This stylist asks, what would you charge for VIP pricing for services on after hours or days off? Personal time is very valuable to me and I've been thinking about offering VIP times at the sacrifice of my personal time. This is, this is entirely going to come down to how much do you value that personal time. Um, now you, you said it's really, really important to you. And so if you want to start to offer this, um, I don't know, is that a 50% increase? Is that, are you going to be able to Uber it and start doing surge pricing and say we're 1.6x time service? Um, that would be an interesting concept. Um, I do like the uh, branding or the dialogue of saying it's VIP pricing. Um, but I think that the real question is, is if you're so busy that people want to get in on your off time, then it's time to raise your regular time prices to make room for them. Um, we need balance. All of us need balance. I love working, but there are times on Sundays I rarely do anything unless we have a class time scheduled. Um, but I don't want to take salon guests on Sundays. On Mondays, we do other educational stuff, but again, I don't want to take salon services on those days. And if, if that time is so important to you, I would really, um, really analyze whether it's worth it or not, you know, because we do have to have that balance and not just always pursuing more success, but actually being able to enjoy the success that we've had. Um, and so if it's a matter of you're so full that people need to get in, I would say instead of surge pricing your off hours, increase the price of your on hours and that will clear out some room, probably 10% of the schedule uh, to allow everybody to start to fill in um, and get the times that they want. So um, with that, guys, this was episode 43, 43. Um, we're getting up there. We, we are getting up there in the number count. So um, I greatly appreciate you guys submitting questions. Like I said, you always can do so by inboxing them directly to me at ffsaloneducation.com or you can just drop them in the comments below and we'll find them and we'll put them on the show. Uh, but with that, I appreciate it. Please share this with your stylist friends, your salon owners, and everybody in the salon industry. And we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you so much.